dear viewer, welcome again to our series of 40 Days of Prayer. This is Pastor Peter Nyaga from Nairobi Central SDA Church. And I'm inviting you on this day that we together may continue receiving the blessings from the law. It's day 10 of our 40 Days of Prayer. Now, today we are going to share a very interesting testimony that I have read from a one man called uh, Sebastian Braxton, and from whose uh, story uh, we entitled The Thought for This um, Day, uh, Smelling Like an Angel. It's, 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 a bit, it's a brief story. I'm going to read through. But before I read this story, I just want to read a text from the book of Isaiah, chapter 6, and uh, verse number 8. Chapter 6, verse number 8, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here am I, send me. I read one more time, Isaiah chapter 6, verse number 8. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, here I am, send me. God is looking for someone to send. Very important. And that's someone, that somebody, that person, could be you, could be you. That's you. He's looking for somebody to send. To send to bring hope and good news to the people. Well, remember yesterday we were talking about reaching out to the cities. And uh, we saw from that text uh, that God is uh, looking out for the believers to seek for the peace and the welfare of the cities where they're dwelling. So this morning is asking then, who can I send? We will not be revived and we sit. When the revival starts taking place, then we are agitated by the Spirit of God to go out for mission. To become disciple makers. To make disciples. And I said we have to be intentional. Let us not just end by listening and getting information and saying, I know these things. We, it's a time for us to practice what we know and what we are learning every day. Mission, it's all about disciple making. So he's asking, who shall I send? And uh, Isaiah says, here am I, said me. But also on this, when God sends, when God requests or is asking, who shall I send? He, he comes with a package. The sending has a package. He will not send you without what to say. In fact, God is asking, who knows what I want to be said that I can send him? He's asking, who is willing to go? I just want to send somebody. Then it's when you volunteer, then God gives you what to share, what to say. He gives enablings. He gives you power. He gives you means. He gives you knowledge. He makes your way straight. He prepares the way before you. He he only wants you to go. You think, remember, of Jonah. I mean, Jonah sent by God and, and, and Jonah went. He, in fact, Jonah never wanted to preach. You see, after Jonah preached in that great city of, of, of Nineveh, and people, the, the entire city got converted, and Jonah was very mad with God. It speaks of, you know, he never wanted to speak. He even didn't know what he was speaking about. God, I'm just emphasizing the point that when God in cause you to go, he, he, he also gives you what to say and how to say. He prepares you and prepares the way. Well, the story here that is so captioned, smelling like an angel, is a very interesting story. I just want you to listen to this story. Then I'll make final remarks. I'm just reading as I got this story. Uh, by Sebastian Buxton. This is the story. It says, As I knocked on the door, a small framed middle-aged woman opened it slightly to greet me. I began explaining that I was going door to door selling Christian literature. She quickly interrupted me and asked if I could come back tomorrow. 
she appeared usually, uh, she, uh, she appeared emotionally disturbed. I learned, uh, I leaned upon my own experience, I learned upon my own experience and replied, Mom, we don't usually come back. So if you're not interested, it's perfectly fine. We have some sample books I can offer you for about 10 to $20. Again, she dismissed my comment and requested I come back the next day. I quiescended and promised to return. The door rapidly closed. A case of a literature evangelist and at this moment, this morning, uh, this afternoon, this afternoon, uh, even wherever you are, if you're a literature evangelist, I respect men and women who walk in the cities knocking doors with, the, you know, you know, giving all those printed pages so inspired. I have done that work. It's a work that you can't compare with anything else. Very impactful in the ministry. Now, this is a very interesting story. Now, the story continues to say, despite my stubborn resistance to the spirit, I returned to her home. Before I could even finish knocking, the door opened and she invited me inside to wait in the kitchen. I was so utterly convinced that she, this would be a waste of time that I did not even bring all my, my books inside with me. I soon regretted that decision. Sitting in plain sight was a blank bank check already signed. Hmm. This meant that she was ready to purchase the books. She just needed to know the price. I began apologizing to the spirit for my lack of faith. Upon her return, she noticed the display I created on her countertop and said, I will purchase every book you have if you can answer me one question. In shock, I said, of course, anything. Hmm. The other questions go, are you an angel? She asked. I shook my head. No, mom, I am not an angel. Are you sure you are not an angel? She asked suspiciously, squinting. Yes, I'm, I am positive. You can ask my mother. She tells you, I, I said with a slight chuckle. I then asked curi curiously, why would you ask me that? Now, her response changed my entire understanding and, 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 and uh, it's going just to change you. And, and when I came to this paragraph in this story, I, it just touched my heart. Now, listen to this. Listen to this. Her response changed my entire understanding of how involved God had been in bringing us together. How God was involved in bringing them together. The woman told me that one year prior, she had a dream in which she dialogued with an angel whose face she could not see due to its brightness. When she woke up, thinking it was just a dream, she sat up and realized that the same angel was at the foot of her bed. Hmm. The angel rapidly flew out the window, and as quickly as she could, she ran to the window to catch a glimpse of him, but to no avail. As she pulled her head back inside the window, an overpowering smell rested in the room. Now listen the ease of the smell. An overpowering smell rested in the room. The smell was pleasant but unfamiliar. She began a search for the, for the source of the smell. She smelled every perfume, calling her essence, air freshener, any scent she could find. None of them matched until I showed up at the door. The woman told me, you had the smell. Hmm. The smell that was left in my house by the angel that I've been searching for, that now when you came in, you had the same smell. Hmm. I was so overwhelmed that I panicked and asked if you could come back tomorrow. I figured if you were an angel from God, you would come back. You wouldn't lie. And to think I almost did not return. I nearly missed up an opportunity to be a part of a miracle of God by losing my heart for souls in the root of service. She went on to say, even right now, you still have the smell. Can you imagine? 
Even right now you have the smell. We prayed together and embraced and she requested Bible study. You see, friends, this is very, very powerful. And that's why this uh, thought is intent on smelling like an angel. One year apart, an angel comes into a, uh, somebody's house. And he, he leaves a smell and this lady has been looking and trying to figure out what kind of a smell. It's a good smell. She smells every kind of a perfume, a scent she can. Nothing that compares. Until when this literature evangelist walks into her house and she's shocked. When she opened the door, the smell was exactly that which was left by an angel one year ago. And this woman panics and she retreats back. She doesn't want to do anything. She asks the, the, the religious evangelist, please come tomorrow, that she can figure out what exactly is happening. You see, friends, God has a way of ordering the events and situations of our lives and in our lives. He has a way of orchestrating divine events and appointments. He orchestrates divine appointments. You see, he knows where to send you and who you're going to meet and what will be the trigger for that person to open his or her heart for you and for, for Jesus. Now, this literature evangelist was giving up. In fact, she says when she came the second time and walked in, she didn't carry all her books back because anyway, she, she didn't believe she could even do a cell. But look at this. God had prepared one year before she would come. Can you imagine that? What opportunities we lose at times when God speaks to us in simple, common ways we don't recognize it was him and we, 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 we lose the opportunity for our lifetime and for eternity. This moment of prayer. The question is, when last did you pray that God may give you a divine appointment? Have you even ever thought of you praying that God may give you a divine appointment? This indeed was a divine appointment. No, Isaiah says, I heard God calling and asking, whom shall I send? And Isaiah says, I can't lose the opportunity. Here I am, Lord, on this appointment. I'm ready for you. But how many of us, we are still hearing God asking, whom shall I send? But we are neglecting the voice of God. As we pray today. There are many souls dying. And the song says, well, the souls of men are dying. And the Lord calls for you. Let none hear you kindly sing, there is nothing I can do. Just rise up and go. God shall make a way for you. God shall prepare a way for you. He did it for this little church evangelist. He's doing it for many people. Do not sit humbly in the house. Many people are perishing for lack of one who can reach out with the gospel of hope. And so this moment we are going to pray for specific divine appointments in our lives. And especially this week, this weekend, and this season of 40 days of prayer. Pray that God may give you a contact, a person for Bible study. God can give you somebody that you'll be doing Bible study with. God can do that. We are talking about divine appointments. God has a way of uh, disarranging and arranging, orchestrating events just to give you divine appointment. Just be available for him. Have an attitude of being available for God. And you shall be amazed at how much God will use you. So can we pray today? And can you join with me? We are praying specifically for divine appointment from God. Gracious Father in heaven. 
thank you for the privilege of listening to the story, the testimony of this man. Beautiful story here, how God orchestrates event to give us divine appointments. And today, Lord, we are praying that you will give us divine appointments. Somehow, in your own ways, in your own means, where even we cannot imagine or desire. You create situations and events that you give my viewer a contact of somebody who is yearning for the message, the gospel, for the word of God, and that they can be an instrument in leading them to eternity. Lord, give us a testimony the way you gave this person here a testimony. Give us encouragement the way you have given this literature evangelist here encouragement. And for the many literature evangelists here in the city and across the globe, Lord, we thank you for these men and women. And we pray for them that they will never get discouraged even when it doesn't make sense. Still, they can carry on for they are in a divine appointment. Lord, I pray that you will touch our thoughts to see how glorious is the divine appointment that you have given us, those of us who have accepted the call, that we will seize the moment and utilize every single opportunity that many shall be reached out, given hope, and be prepared for eternity. Lord bless us. And give us testimony once you give us the divine appointments. And we may share with other people to know what you can do is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, dear viewer, for being with us today again. And I pray that we may continue uh, praying for the seven-member list that you have chosen. If you have not yet chosen, we are praying for seven people. Please choose among your contacts seven people you want to commit to. But today... We are also praying that God may give you a divine appointment, connecting you with somebody who is yearning to know Christ, that you may be the pathway, you may be the means, you may be the bridge that will connect them to Christ. As we continue praying through the day, the Lord be with you.